Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about every single modification that I have done on my E90 M3. already know what this video is about. I like to do one of these videos with every single build that I do every few months because the mods stack up pretty fast. Now I've only had this car for a few months but we have done a few things to it so I'm just going to give you guys the full list of everything that I have done now and then the plans in the immediate and far future. And this will just kind of bring everyone who's on the channel up to speed with what I'm doing, what I plan on doing, and how the modification process is going on this car so far. In addition to the mods, I'll talk a little bit about some of the maintenance that I have done on this car because that is always a big topic in discussion with the BMW E90 M3s. And just remember, if you guys have any questions, make sure to drop a comment down below. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about the exterior modifications first and foremost. The entire car does have carbon fiber on the underside. It has a carbon fiber GTS front lip. It has carbon fiber side skirt extensions, and it also has the carbon fiber rear diffuser. Now, all of the carbon fiber on this car is one by one weave, which is a little bit different than your standard weave, which is actually two by two weave. It just means that it's a very tight, small weave. I wanted to do that particular weave just because it's a little bit more unique, and I wanted something to set this car apart. I didn't want to just do standard carbon fiber on the entire car, so I decided to go one by one with everything. The good thing about this carbon fiber is that it is a little more original, it is a little more unique and different. However, the bad thing is it's very hard to find replacement parts. So if something were to happen, like say I hit something on the road or cracked a piece of the carbon fiber, it would take me a long time to get a replacement. So there are definitely pros and cons to having the one by one weave, but I think it looks absolutely extraordinary. So that's really why I went for it. For the front kidney grills, I went with the M3 style that has the double slatted grill setup. I actually, I just like this better. I had this on my F30 as well, and I just think it looks a little bit cleaner than having the single slits. I think the gaps are kind of weird on those. So I went ahead and actually ordered the double slatted grill in gloss black. I think it looks really good. The entire theme with this car so far has really been white and black, kind of like a panda theme, keeping it very simple. White car, black wheels, black accents. I just tried to keep everything as basic as possible. The front bumper is a replacement front bumper. I went with the E90 M3 Euro spec bumper. So what that means exactly is it's just a side marker delete. So you do not have the side markers at all. I just think it looks way cleaner. Most people with the OEM bumpers, you'll notice they have a like an oval cover right here. And I just thought that that kind of muddied up the front end. And the original front bumper that came on this car just wasn't in that great of condition anyways. So I went ahead and just bought the Euro spec. I think it was a good call. It turned out really, really nice. And I'm super, super happy with the outcome there. Moving along to the wheels. These are the variant Xenons in 19 by 10 in the front and 19 by 11 in the back. The offset is about 25 millimeters all the way around. Variant does a fantastic job of making these wheels. These are actually cold forged wheels. I really like the way that these wheels look. They look super aggressive. I also love that they're super wide because the car just feels planted on the ground at all times. And I think that black for this color setup was just the best way to go. It's very stealth, very sleek. Makes the entire car look that much more sporty. For the roof, we actually wrapped it in S-Tech PPF gloss black. Now the great thing about S-Tech is it's not only a very nice gloss finish of black, but it also acts as a PPF. So it will protect the paint underneath from any rock chips or debris that might hit it. For the mirrors, I actually painted these black. I knew that I wanted to go with the black and white theme. I didn't really love the way that they were white when they came on the car and they were a little scratched up. So I just went ahead and painted them black. 
Very, very easy and cheap, but I was married to the idea of having these black, so I just went ahead and painted them black, as well as the shark fin. I painted that black as well. And then on the back, I have the Palm Performance Carbon Fiber High Kick Spoiler. However, I did go ahead and paint match that to the car. I just think that the paint match looks a lot cleaner rather than doing like the carbon fiber that everyone does. My idea with this car was to keep all carbon fiber on the lower side. On my last build with the F30, I had carbon fiber all over the place and it was just kind of overkill. I didn't want to do the carbon fiber up here. I wanted carbon fiber only on the bottom side, only the four pieces, side skirt extensions, back and front. So I decided to just have this paint match and I think on the white, it looks really good. I like it, it's clean. I might switch it up down the road. It seems that that style is kind of hit or miss with some people, but I really do like it. For the M3 badge, we did go with the black M3 badge. And on the tail lights, we have the Aztec Dino Shade tint. So it's a very, very light tint by Dino Shade, which also acts as a PPF, so it protects the tail lights. I have the Aztec Dino Shade light tint on the side markers, and then I also have the Aztec Dino Shade light tint on the front headlights. So like I said before, the great thing about that is everything by Aztec is also a PPF, so it's protecting anything that it covers. This entire car is covered in PPF. There's not an inch on this car that isn't covered in PPF. So I really don't have to worry about rocks or anything hitting this car. The car is just completely protected, which is great. The peace of mind alone is totally worth it. In addition to the PPF, the car is ceramic coated with 9H. It has two base layers and one top coat, which means that anytime I wash it, it's extremely hydrophobic and it's very, very easy to keep clean. In addition to the entire car being ceramic coated, the wheels, the trim, the glass, everything is also ceramic coated. So this car stays clean all the time with very minimal effort. All right, so let's get into some of the basic performance stuff that I've done. We haven't really done much yet because I just got done doing all my maintenance stuff, which we'll talk about, but the Valvetronic exhaust is in fact valved. So you can open and close it depending on how loud you want it. Or if you just want the exhaust to go straight through or utilize the muffler, this is a fantastic exhaust. I just got this on last week and I absolutely love it. I highly recommend it to anyone who is in the market for an exhaust system. It is absolutely fantastic for the price, especially. Continuing on with performance, the only other performance mod that I have is the AFE carbon fiber intake. This was a very simple and easy install. Obviously, it's just a carbon fiber intake. It was not difficult at all, but the reason I went with that one is because the price point. It was about half the cost as most of the other intakes that are out on the system. I think that a lot of people sometimes overpay for intakes. They really aren't doing that much for your car in terms of performance. You might be able to save a little bit of gas, but they do all have their own unique sounds. I really, really like this AFE carbon fiber intake because it just kind of dressed up the engine bay a little bit, put a little bit of carbon fiber in there, not too gaudy, not over the top. I don't love how it says AFE power on top, but I have learned to live with it. So those are the only two performance modifications that I've done so far on this car. However, the future plans have a lot in store for this car. As far as suspension, I have done the ISC N1 coilover setup on this car, which I absolutely love. I think this car sits so well on the ISC coilovers. The drop, in my opinion, is pretty much perfect. I have it set so the gap is just about a finger. And overall, the car just rides so well. I love the way that these coilovers feel. You can also adjust the dampening and the camber plates on them, so you just get the perfect fitment and the perfect ride with these coilovers. These particular coilovers are in the $1,000 range and they are absolutely worth it. I really haven't done too much to the interior of this car. I did put up my radar detector and my Blackview dash cam, but the only thing I've really done is this steering wheel. I did upgraded paddle shifters, which are just basic black aluminum paddle shifters, which I really, really like. And then I had my custom steering wheel done by AZA Auto Wheel which is super clean, super basic. It almost just looks like OEM Plus. It's honestly one of my favorite things that I've done to this car because you're touching it every day and it just feels so good in your hands. Having these grips right here and just the thickness of it, it's a fantastic wheel. It's got the flat bottom, all wrapped in leather. And then they also do this part in leather too, which is great because the original ones are this weird paint coating that always chips on these cars. So this just looks incredible. 
If we talk a little bit about the maintenance that I've done on this car, I have done the rod bearings, and then the previous owner did the throttle actuators. We also did the PowerFlex motor mount, so I upgraded from OEM to PowerFlex, which are absolutely killer. If you guys are looking for motor mounts for your car, I'm telling you, go with the PowerFlex. Super stiff, and they're also adjustable. It kind of solves all of that clunkiness that comes along with the DCT transmission. This car just drives so well with the suspension and the PowerFlex motor mounts. I'm telling you, it's like a completely different car. In addition to that, we did the fuel breather valve and we did the valve cover gaskets. And we also did the E46 M3 oil cap, which fixes a common leak that people have with those oil caps. So once we knocked out all of that maintenance, this car has performed absolutely beautifully. I am totally in love with this car. It is by far my favorite car that I've owned personally to date. There's just nothing like the sound of this V8 engine in this BMW and just the way that it drives. It's so raw. It's such an experience to drive one of these cars. And I do not regret buying this car and putting the money into it to bring it back to a healthy state of mind at all. Okay, so I think that was about everything that I've done to the car so far. I've only had the car for four months. I had the F30 while I had this car for a while too, and I was kind of finishing up this build, but now we're just kind of getting momentum and going into this car and really starting to do some modifications. Obviously, first I wanted to take care of all of that big maintenance stuff before I actually got into modifying this car, but the maintenance is finally done, and so now it's time to go full gas into modifying this car, and I'm super excited. The plans that we have on deck, the sponsors that I have on board, this is going to be a sick build. So if we talk a little bit about plans and what I have up and coming for this car, first I'm gonna be doing the big brake kit. I have a couple of different companies that I'm looking at for the big brake kit, but I'm really, really excited because of A, performance when it comes to the braking. I do wanna start tracking this car, and then B, just the overall look of a big brake kit sitting behind a nice set of wheels. Oh, I cannot wait. I'm so, so excited to get some actual big brakes on this car. I'm looking at AP brakes, Willwood, Brembo, StopTech, a lot of the more popular brands that make these brakes. I haven't quite decided yet, but we should have that ironed out within like the next two weeks. You guys may also know that this car is going to be getting wrapped within the next week. And some of you are triggered about that because you love the Alpine White. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the Alpine White too, but I like my cars to be a little more unique and original. You can always go back Back to the Alpine White. The Alpine White isn't going anywhere. But I do feel the need to just make this car stand out a little bit differently than everyone else's that I see on Instagram with the white and the black wheels. I wanna do something different. I wanna keep this car interesting. And in addition to that, I wanna start taking this car to more shows. I no longer have a show car to take to car shows anymore. So this is, this is the car that I'm going to be taking. Once I sold the F30, I knew that I kinda had to build this car out a little more and do some more fun stuff to it. So the wrap is going down. The wrap's going down next week and then I also have two other sets of wheels it is going to be it's gonna be good you guys are really really gonna enjoy it I think the color I think we knocked it out of the park with this one and I cannot wait to reveal it to you as far as more performance I am definitely doing the mid pipe I'm gonna be upgrading the mid pipe in this car for that I'm also looking at a couple of different companies like Mach Schnell and Valvetronic I'm just waiting on them to actually finalize the details on that mid pipe but depending on how long that takes I might just go for the actual Mach Schnell mid pipe what's up man this private property. Okay. I don't have a problem with okay, it. Okay, thank you so it. much. I appreciate All it. Right, man. Happy, happy holiday. So in addition to the mid pipe and some of that performance stuff, I also want to tune this car. That is something that I'm looking into as well. I also have not quite decided on tune. I'm close. I, I think I'm either gonna go with RK Tunes or Alpine. But the thing with the RK Tunes is they don't offer the GTS transmission tune and I really want to do the transmission flash on this car. I've heard amazing things about it. Alpine, however, does offer tuning for this car as well as the transmission flash. I think a lot of the tunes are very, very similar. It just depends on what you're really looking for as far as a bundle and a package. I'm kind of leaning towards Alpine just because they also offer the GTS transmission flash. A lot of people are Gintani or Gintani fans, however you guys want to pronounce it, but I have heard some mixed reviews and I'm probably not going to be diving into that pool based on what I have read. So I have done my research when it comes to these tunes and I think it's either going to be Alpine or RK, but I am, I'm leaning towards Alpine because of the GTS transmission flash. In addition to all that, I'm really excited to announce that I have partnered up with Continental Tires on my channel and my builds. So now I have 
have a supply of tires coming to me, which means I probably am gonna start owing you guys some more donuts and burnouts. But securing a tire sponsor is something that I've wanted for a long time. It took a lot of work to get to that point. I approached so many companies and finally I got a foot in the door and I got a response back and they're on board. So I'm really, really, really grateful for that partnership and I cannot wait to get the first set of tires in next week on my new wheels. The reveal with the new wheels and the new wrap comes out 1-1-20. So New Year's Day, you guys look out for it. It's gonna be sick and I'm gonna have all of the new stuff on the car for that reveal. As far as most of the exterior stuff on this car, I'm, I'm pretty much where I wanna be. I'm pretty close. The only other thing that I would really like to see on this car are a new set of headlights, custom headlights, probably DTM, or maybe the circular ones. I also have not quite decided, but I do think I know which company I'm gonna go with. It's just a matter of the style that I want. I think that the customized headlights on these cars completely set them apart. The problem with these ones is you have that middle bulb right there that just kind of, it fills out. And the rings aren't very vivid, so it's hard to see a lot of the definition in those rings. That's why a lot of people go with the customized ones, and I am definitely gonna be doing that. It's gonna be like a whole facelift when I get that done on this car. The only problem is you have to send the headlights out and then wait a week or two to get them back. So I'm kind of waiting until we get a lot of this stuff done so I can go ahead and do that. I was gonna do it while we were doing the wrap, but that is happening over the holidays. So it would have kind of put a halt on some of the other things that were getting done. So I decided to just go ahead and do the reveal without the headlights. I think when I do the brakes, the big brake kit install, I'm gonna pull out the headlights and send them out while they're doing the brakes. So we can just go ahead and knock that all out at once. Let's talk a little bit about the interior stuff that I wanna do on the interior. I am definitely gonna be doing a half roll cage. I know that that's kind of like on the fence with some people. Oh, you don't need a roll cage. You're not tracking your car. I do wanna track my car eventually, but I just think the roll cages look sick and that's why I'm doing it. You open those back windows with a little roll cage peeking through, dude, they look so good. In addition to the roll cage, I am definitely going to be doing some seats. Now seats are something I've been considering for a while. I'm just trying to figure out which ones I wanna do. I think the pole positions, Recaro's, or the Speed Vs, something like those. I really want a basic seat, black, simple, nothing too crazy, but maybe I'll do some accents in terms of the seat belts. I'm going to keep this build very, very clean. I try to keep my builds pretty refined and rather clean, so that's why I'm not going absolutely nuts with stuff like wide body and all that. I don't want to cut into fenders on this car, but you guys saw what I did with the F30, and I think that you're gonna enjoy and appreciate this build when I'm done with it. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers everything. I'm sure I, I missed something here and there. I do wanna do some more bushing replacements and, and little miscellaneous stuff like that, but I didn't really wanna go through all of that stuff with you guys. There are little things that I'm going to be doing to this car. However, the big thing that I wanna do, the big goal for this guy in the future is the supercharger. Now, a lot of people, they talk about doing turbocharger or supercharger, which one are you going to do? As you may or may not know, this car does not have that much torque. It's got great horsepower, but it just lacks in torque. It's very, very putsy in the torque range, and that's why people do the supercharger. The other thing about supercharging these cars is you're kind of retaining that V8 sound and just the overall sound of how this car was manufactured. Also, superchargers tend to be a bit more reliable than turbocharger setups. So supercharger is definitely where I'm erring on the side of. I don't know which supercharger I'm gonna do. It's probably not gonna be for like a year or six months or something like that but I'm definitely going to do one at some point. If you guys have any suggestions on that, go ahead and drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say about superchargers on these cars and which one you would like to see. There's a bunch of different kits. There's some very whiny kits, some very conservative kits, and then some very crazy kits. I think that I'm gonna err on the conservative side, but I definitely, definitely would love to see a supercharger in this car at some point. You guys, so that covers everything. I think we covered it all. Like I said before, I probably missed like one or two small things here and there, but you get the idea, you see where we're at. We're about four or five months into this build. It's been an absolute blast. A lot of that time was spent, like two months was spent really getting the exterior just in good shape. Paint and miscellaneous parts, bumper, under trays, things like that, and then the maintenance stuff. So a lot of that, half of that time was really just rebuilding this car, getting it back to where I wanted it and then we started doing some of the modifications. So it's very early off in this process, but I like to do these videos because I get a lot of questions about how many mods I have done to the car. And these type of videos really just answer those questions and kind of bring you guys up to speed and let you know where we're at, kind of where we're headed. Anyways, that's it for this video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have anything to add, make sure you comment down below. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, hit the bell notification. And just like that, this video is over and I'm out. Peace.